Let's look at how we can analyze our dual titration data using LogarPro software. This is a dual titration trace for hydrochloric acid here, as you can see, this is the data, and acetic acid. Here you can see this is the data. I'm not going to go over an interpretation of the graph except to point out that the pH here starts off lower for hydrochloric acid than it does for acetic acid. But now let's look at what we can do to analyze and find the equivalence point for the hydrochloric acid trace. Now here close to the equivalence point, which has got to be in this area where we've got the big break, close to the equivalence point the student has been adding one milliliter at a time. You can see how that works right here. And if you of course had added like 0.1 milliliter at a time in this area you would have gotten a clearer and smoother trace here. You have your points would be more points in this area. Well, we can find the equivalence point pretty accurately just with the data that we have. So let's begin. Now what we're looking for is the point where the curvature of this S curve, you can see how it looks kind of like an S, changes from a positive curvature here, as you can see, to a negative curvature here. And that's called the inflection point. It should be exactly where the equivalence point is somewhere in the vicinity of 31, 32, 33 milliliters. So the first thing we have to do is find the slope of this line at every point we can see. Uh, the slope tells us, of course, the rise over the run. And the slope should be very, very high here, close to the equivalence point, maybe highest at the equivalence point. That should be where the curvature changes. So the first thing we're going to do is insert, excuse me, we're going to take the data and we're going to click on data and get a new calculated column, which will be the slope. So let's type in the name slope of pH. And then the short name, we'll call that D1 since we're doing the first derivative. This is a calculus expression. So we click on functions down here in the expression box. We click on calculus and we're going to take the derivative. We want to do that of the pH. So we go to variables and of course it's the pH of the hydrochloric acid we're looking for. We'll click on done and we can see immediately the D1 column shows up here. And here are some very high numbers right around the equivalence point. It would help if we graphed this. So we click on Insert Graph. And as you can see, we have a graph of the slope of the pH versus the volume of sodium hydroxide added. And it starts real, real low. As you can see, the slope down in this area is, is pretty small. And then it swoops up and swoops back down. What we really want, then, is the peak of this curve, which we probably don't have a point for. However, there is a function that can give us the slope of this slope. And at the peak, you can imagine it's going up, 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 and then it comes down, down, down. At the peak up here, it's going to have a slope of zero. So let's look for that. Here, we're now going to get the second derivative, which is the slope of the slope. So we're going to go to data, we're going to insert a new calculated column, and the new calculated column we're going to call the slope of slope of the pH HCl. And we'll call that D2 since it's the second derivative. We come down to the expression box, we choose the function in calculus, second derivative, and the second derivative of what? Well, we choose our variable. It's the slope of the pH that, excuse me, I beg your pardon. It is, in fact, the pH that we're looking for here because we're doing the second derivative of the original 
graph. So click on variables and HCL and done. We now have a new graph. And you can see here in the middle that the, there is significant change from positive to negative, And that has to do with the change of the curvature. So let's insert a third graph. And the third graph is the second derivative. We're going to go ahead and send this graph to the back. So we can only see the original graph and the slope of the slope of that graph. Now you look and you see, well, it's got to be in here someplace. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look and draw a straight line between these two points on either side of the intersection point. We go up here to the linear tool and we now have a straight line. What we really want though is to know exactly where this is. Now there's a couple ways to do that. We can position our cursor right over the intersection and then look down to the left, right under where it says slope of slope of PHHCL, there's a set of parentheses, and that 31.7 you see there is the volume of sodium hydroxide at the inflection point. So 31.7 would be our milliliters of sodium hydroxide at the equivalence point. The other way, and sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't, is to click on Analyze and Interpolation Calculator. The Interpolation Calculator looks at the latest slope of the slope, 0.0017 on the negative, and the volume for that. You can change this to a zero. That sometimes works. And now you see that the equivalence point is at 31.74076. That's way too many significant digits. Probably the only significant digits are the 3, 1, and 7. So that is your equivalence point, and that's what you would use in order to determine the uh, actual molarity of the hydrochloric acid. So you should be able at this time to look at the acetic acid now and find its equivalence point using exactly the same technique.